I'm Dr. Kristen R. Bromley. This video series, which is part of my online music academy, specifically accompanies Chords and Harmony books 1 and 2 from my Method book series. Like all my books, this selection is available to purchase through Amazon and Google Play. For help, see the links in the description below. In the videos which are part of this specific course, I progress through the lessons in Chords and Harmony books 1 and 2, explaining and demonstrating concepts and playing each of the songs and exercises contained therein, so you can hear how they sound and play them right along with me. You are of course welcome to view these videos with or without the book, but with the book you can work through all the songs and exercises, and in the process learn all the various types of chords used to play music on the guitar and master your chord playing abilities. Alright, let's get to jamming in this lesson. Hi there, this is lesson three, and we're starting on page 17. So in this lesson, we're gonna learn a, we're gonna learn a new chord, uh, D7 chord, and we'll start with that. So we already know the G chord, it's written there on the page for us, and we know the C chord. We've played those, both of those, in lessons one and two. But we're gonna play D7 now, and D7's here up on the board, uh, and it's also in your book. On this one, notice the similarity between D7 and D. This is the first dominant 7th chord we're getting, so we will now have a D chord and a D7. Hear the difference in sound. D, just regular D major, D7 adds the flatted 7th. And to do that, we take what we would normally play as a D, we go down 2 frets. But, to make that simple change, <laughs> we have to completely refigure our, our hands. So to, to do D7, we're going to put our index finger at the 1st fret, on the second string, and then our middle finger will go at the second fret of the third string, and our ring finger will go up on the high high string at the second fret. And like D, we're only going to strum the top four strings, so we won't play the bottom two. And uh, we still have G and C. Going from C to D7 is really easy, we just maintain our index finger. So you can switch back and forth between those two, C to D7. G to C will be the, just the same as before, and D7 to G. Now I play my G 2, 3, and 4, which is the alternate fingering shown there, more often than the other way. And for me, that feels really comfortable. So a lot of these lessons will start to be called the key of such and such. And all the songs in this lesson are in the key of G. So come back and talk about that in a minute. But now that we know the D7 chord, we're going to go ahead and play number one. We're going to use that same strumming pattern that we used, that we learned in the last lesson. Down, down, up, up, down. We're going to do it with straight interpretation. Down, down, up, up, down. Notice that the, the first line asks us to play it four times. So underneath, in parentheses, it tells us, to, to, tells us to play that repeated section four times. So instead of only playing it two, which is what we would do if it didn't tell us otherwise, we're actually going to play through it four times. And then on the last line, that repeated section happens six times. All right, so here we go. One, two, one, two, ready, and we got G.
little fast for you, uh, or maybe that was an okay tempo. Um, as you're viewing these on YouTube, one of the things you can do on YouTube is you can actually slow things down and speed things up. So you can go in under the setting, and if you wanted to play that with me slower, you can actually slow that down and play, play right along. All right, so the next thing we're going to go on to is the concept of a key. In two lessons ago, I mentioned what scales are when we have notes that go in alphabetical order, and we used the C scale to sort of help us learn uh, about major, uh, dominant, and minor chords. So different keys uh, use a different parent scale. This particular key, like any any particular key, is going to have chords and notes that come from it. So the melodic notes, the melody notes, most of them come from the notes of this scale in the melodies. And then the chords themselves actually come from these as well. So we have the root or first step of the scale. And then two... Now there are chords that actually come off of each one of these steps. So the melody comes from this, the scale and the chords come from the scale as well. So the first chord, or the one chord, it's written in Roman numerals, is a major chord and it uses the root, third, and fifth. We could have a two chord. If we do it's minor, and uses a small Roman numeral. So G major, A minor, the three chord is also minor, the four chord would be major, the five chord can be just a regular major chord. It can, it's also where that dominant seventh chord comes from. And then the sixth chord is E minor. So as we proceed, the most common chords in each uh, key are the one, the four, and the five chord. Those are the, those are the ones that we use the most. And then occasionally we use the others. So a lot of songs use just that. In that last progression that we played, it, it used G, C, and D7 almost the whole time, and that's the one chord, the four chord, and the five seven chord. And then there's one spot where we had an E minor, which was the six chord. So G, C, D7, those dominant seventh chords say, please, 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 please go back to the one chord. And that helps define a key. We add the E minor in there, the sixth chord. So as we pr proceed, we're going to play lots of songs in major and mi some in minor keys as well. And they're going to have chords that correlate with the scale of that key. And most of these lessons up top, you're seeing the one, the four, and the five, seven chord. There's a few where things are done differently. Okay, so now as we're on page 18 and 19, we've got a new notation style. So far, we've basically been using... Uh, bars with slash marks and playing strumming patterns um, that fit into each me measure. Now we're going to look at some written music where the melody is written on the staff and in this case we've got the lyrics under the melody and the chords are, are written above just like they are in the other music. So this is on page 18. Here's a little example from number two when the saints go marching in. couple things. So down below we have the lyrics. The melody that's written on the staff matches those lyrics. So the lyrics are telling us what, what words to sing when we're singing that melody. Um, if you're interested in knowing how to read these notes, where they are on the guitar, then the note reading series is perfect. That It takes you right through reading notes on the guitar. Um, up above we have the chords. And we're going to still play the chords, and that's the focus of this. And we're going to sing the melody. And so we're going to sing and play at the same time. Or uh, when I was first learning, I needed to just focus on one thing at a time. And, and it took a while before I could do both things at the same time. So the chord symbols written above, we're still going to insert the strumming pattern. So we're using down, down, up, up, down, just as before. We're going to insert that once per measure. So on When the Saints Go Marching In, the whole first line is a G chord. And then it's third measure of the second line before we have a new chord, D7. But for each one of those measures, we're going to play a G chord. There's a couple other things to point out. So we mentioned key signature. The songs in this lesson are in the key of G. There's a little sharp pound sign 
hashtag little sharp sign sitting on the F line. That tells us that all the notes, uh, anytime there's an F in the melody, that it's an F sharp. But more importantly, what it tells us is it's the major scale or minor scale that only has one sharp in it. It has an F sharp, and that can help us identify uh, major major uh, keys, minor keys. If you're really interested in theory, check out the theory and technique uh, method book where it takes you through in-depth theory. But we got um, sharps there. And the, and the note reading book will also take you through uh, learning all the different keys on the guitar. So we're going to play the chords. One other thing to point out before we start here is this pickup measure. This is a partial measure that happens before psh, the beginning of the song. Um, sort of the space for it is borrowed usually from the last measure of the song. So there's this three, two, one, and then we go. And we're in four, four time. So we would need an extra beat, but it doesn't, it doesn't exist. That leads us in. Usually, almost always, we don't start playing the chords until we hit the top of the song form, so to speak. So after the pickup measure, and usually it's going to be indicated by a double bar line here showing us, oh, that's where the top of that form is. So we'll take a gander at when the saints go marching in. Um, we're going to go down, down, up, up, down. If you just need to play, you're welcome to do that. If you want to sing along, you're welcome to sing along. <laughs> I get paid a lot more money to play the guitar than I do to sing, so uh, you may want to sing to uh, sing sing over me a little bit. So I'm just finding the melody <clears throat> to get started, and we go. Oh, when the saints go marching in, oh, when the saints go. Next verse. You can look up multiple verses if you'd like to on on line. It's easy to find multiple verses to these old folk songs. And it's great playing folk songs. Our pop songs today really grew out of the folk tradition. And there's a lot of arguments that pop music is just modern day folk, so to speak. And so um, there's a lot of similar chord progressions, a lot of similar styles in playing. And, and it correlates, and what's nice is that these folk songs are all in public domain, so it keeps the cost of the book much lower. Um, we're going to do a couple things, though, as we work on this. Sometimes keeping that strumming pattern going, adding chords, and then singing is one of the most demanding tasks on, on our cognitive function, on our brain. So sometimes, if you can't think how to sing um, and play and do chords, or, or strum, and do chords all at the same time, it helps to simplify. Really what has to happen is something has to be automatic. For me, the guitar playing was the most comfortable skill I had at first, and I could just play guitar and focus on singing and, and on learning to sing. Um, for some of you, singing may be more natural, and you can just kind of put it back into the less focused part of the brain and really focus on the guitar playing. For me, um, and for a lot of my students, it helps to simplify the strumming pattern. And we'll do that as we sing through so that we don't have to worry about keeping this complicated thing going. We can just worry about trying to sing. And so a great thing to do is just to strum all down, go back to our all down strum, strumming. So we'll do that on this one. So we're going to go, oh, when the same. Go marching in Oh, when the saints go
doing down up down up so oh when the saints go marching in oh when the saints go marching in how I Okay, so now we're going to try adding that strumming pattern. I'm going to swing it just a little bit. Oh, when the saints go marching in. Oh, when the saints go all crazy we're not gonna go crazy though let's do Red River Valley same thing down down up up down I'll again find the, the beginning this one has two beats as a pickup in the pickup measure from this valley. as we go through the book they're not all in the greatest of singing key uh, for you and we're gonna talk about how you can fix that um, at the end of this lesson but we'll start here from this, and we'll be in ready, and from this valley, they say, you are going, I will miss your bright eyes and sweet smile, for they say, you are taking the sunshine. need a little need the other lyrics okay so we're gonna move on to worried man blues same thing uh, go about there this one only has a one beat in the pickup measure so we go three two one it takes. I'm gonna say when I pluck the melody that's to help us find the starting pitch for singing um, but you don't actually have to play the song by plucking those melody notes first but you can learn how to do that by heading over and, and doing the note reading method uh, the note reading series and the method so it three two one it takes Shenandoah, another great one. Down, down, up, up, down, 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 up, up, down. Starts on the same pitch. A three, two, one. Oh, Shenandoah.
On that one I noticed I took a little bit of creative liberty with the melody. See you. to stay on that. So I, I switched the two notes, the B and the D, uh, and did it did it that way. That's the thing you'll find with folk songs. There's a lot of creative liberties that end up getting taken. And nowadays, we have recordings of songs, so we can sing along with the recording of our favorite artist on our favorite popular songs. Uh, but back then, they didn't have that same luxury um, for the most part. And so you might hear it, and then you might start playing it your own way and never have a recording to go back and learn, learn it the way the artist did it. Um, but there's a lot of creative liberties that get taken with these. Okay, so we're going to now go on to look at pages 20 and 21. We're going to learn a couple new strumming patterns. Okay, so now we're on Yankee Doodle on page 20. With this song, we're going to use a new strumming pattern. It It's kind of not quite brand new in that we used it just a teeny bit in lesson two, but it's pretty much brand new. So we're using this strumming pattern because there's going to be places throughout the song where we have two chords per measure. In the last song, we had two, or in the last lesson, for the one song where we had two chords per measure, we strummed down, down up on the first chord. We did that same thing for the next chord, and then we went back to G. So up here, we're going to do just that, and that's the strumming pattern written for number six and for number seven. So we're going to go down, down, up, down, down, up. If we were to count it, we would have one, two, and three, four, and one, and two, and three, four, and... So let's take a look. Two, and three, four, and down. Down, up, down, down, up. Let me, I'm gonna drop my pick here. So you got down, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up. This is one where the first half and the second half are the exact same. Which is another way to think of it. We can use that strumming pattern when there are two chords per bar. We could use our other strumming pattern when there's only one. But for now, we're going to do just this one. So Yankee Doodle, when we start on G, we're going to have G. And then in the second measure, we do G for the first half, D7 for the second half, G. So let's practice, let's practice that measure, uh, that second measure. We're going to G, D7, back to G. Let's do that again. G, D7. Let's do it again. G, D7, G. Now, when we put, let's put the measure in front of it. So we're going to have G for a bar, then G to the D7 to the G. One more time. Ready? And G. I mentioned this in in the last lesson, but I'm starting to switch to that chord on the up strum to be ready for this. So I actually start to switch from one chord to the next a little bit early, and I just disguise my uh, my switching that way. That might be hard to focus on, but that's a natural ability you want to to generate over time. What I found with teaching in the years and years of teaching chords like this and teaching guitarists of various levels is that sometimes, and in the case of this skill, the more we just keep moving forward and learning chords and working on songs, there's going to come a point where it's just going to click and you can just switch chords easier. And that happens differently f for different folks. But you keep playing along with me, you keep working on these songs and other songs on your own, and, and one day, bam, you can just switch faster. And it's like, yes, this is one of those skills that isn't just a gradual climb. Um, it's more like you're fighting, 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 you jump to the next step. Fighting, 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 jump to the next step. I shouldn't say fighting, working, 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 jump to the next step. So, depending on where you're at, if you feel frustrated, it's okay. Just hang in there, have some fun, play along, do the best you can. And remember, you can always just simplify and work on strumming it by itself, then work on chord changing by itself, then try to put the two skills together. 
singing, you can work on singing by itself. I had, I've had to do a lot of that. I have a contra alto voice. It's a unique voice type. Uh, the size of the vocal cords is kind of in between uh, a guy's uh, vocal cords and, the, and a lady's. And so, kind of like boys when they're growing up, their vocal cords, they get that cracking in their voice. I, I had that which was different than a lot of my friends who were girls who sang and so it's a developmental thing and we learn how to do it. So I had to work a lot on, on figuring out how to sing. I had, had to work on that a lot by itself too. So we all get it somewhere wherever we get it. Um, guitar can be learned by anybody. I've never had a student I couldn't help. In, <laughs> and I've had many. So here we go. I'm going to worry about singing, and if, if you can do it at the same time, that's great. If not, that's okay, too. So here you go. Down, down, up, down. One, two, ready, and five. So you may have lost me on the vocals a little bit there. It kind of goes out of my range. Like I mentioned, at the end of this lesson, we're going to talk about some other things, some things we can do to help with that range uh, with the use of a capo. Now, this song only has a couple places where there's two chords. So something we can do when we're playing music, and that we don't always know when we're playing music what the strumming pattern is going to be. We have it here in this written book, and we because I've given it to you and sometimes in published music my company or, or other companies that do published music sometimes they give it to you sometimes they don't and you just have to sort of figure it out well we could choose to use the down down up up down pattern I go to that one because it's the only 4-4 four, four pattern we know other than down straight down 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 or down up down up down up down up so I could use that in the measures where there's one chord per bar, and then in the measures where there's two, I can switch the down, down, up, down, down, up. Because this down, down, up is the first half of the strumming pattern that we would do in down, down, up, up, down. And a simple solution when we have two chords per bar is to just use the first half of the pattern that we're doing twice. So let's play Yankee Doodle that way. So down, down, up. Up, down. Here we go. One, two, ready, and father. Alright, so we're going to move on now to Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. In this one, we're going to have to do a lot of down, down, up, down, down. So we'll just do it for the whole song. So you got Twinkle, one, two, we're going to go down, down, up, down, down, up. One, two, ready, and Twinkle. Great. So we're going to move on to page 21 now. 
take a look at three four time and a storming pattern for that one. This is the first time that we've done a storming pattern in the in the time signature of three four. So this is the first time we've done something in three four minus going back to the first lesson where we were practicing just strumming and, and rhythmic figures. <clears throat> so this is the first time and this strumming pattern it's a lot like the one we were just doing just take off the last beat. So down, down, up, down, 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 up, down. It helps to count one, two, up, three. Count the beats and say up on the ands and, 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 or on the off beats, which right now our arm works like a metronome. Down, up, down, up. One and two and three and four. And right at that eighth note subdividing level, so we're starting down on the beats and up on the off beats. So I can go one, two, up, three. One, two, up, three. By counting, we're telling our mind, okay, one, two, three. We're on three, we start back. One, two, three. We hit three, we start over again. So one, two, up, three. One, two, up, three. One, two, up, three. One, two, up, three. One, two, Two up three. One, two up three. One, two up three. If we're gonna swing it, one, two up three. One, two up three. One, two up three. One, two up three. Okay, so we're gonna take a look here now at Amazing Grace, which is perhaps my favorite uh, folk hymn tune. It's just awesome. I just love this one. I recently re recently re released an album um, called Amazing Grace, which is all traditional hymns, <clears throat> a lot of old hymns. There might be a couple newer ones, but that I've recorded uh, through in various styles. Some are finger style, classical sounding. Some are uh, more bluesy. I did this one as a blues. actually a video if you can see me performing it <clears throat> on the same channel Kristen Bromley music Kristen R Bromley music and uh, and the albums out there uh, if, if as a fellow guitar lover you may may enjoy that so but right now we're gonna play amazing grace together and sing it with this strumming pattern down down up down one two up three so we're gonna count I'm gonna count the that I'm going to say that while we play this strumming pattern and follow the chords and then we'll go back and sing it. So you're going to have one, two, up three, three, two, one, G, two, up three, down, down, up, down, now C, down, down, up, down, one, two, up three, one, two, up three, one, two, up three, D7, one, two, up three. So three, here we go. Three, two, amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost. find more lyrics to that one too. Such a great song to play. Um, on this case, if you were working on strumming and singing at the same time, you would just do three down strums uh, per bar. So, three, two, one, one, two, three. We wouldn't do four, that would kind of throw us off. Let's do that together. You can practice singing if you aren't. Um, already able to sing and play at the same time. So you're going to go 
Ready? Uh, I'm gonna give three, two, and then on one is the pickup. So three, two, amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost. Let's try adding in the strumming pattern. So three, two, amazing grace. Okay, so we're gonna go on and do He's a Jolly Good Fellow. Same strumming pattern. This has a one beat pickup measure as well. So you go three, two, four, he's a jolly. Okay, so we're looking at written music with just lyrics and chords now. So we're on page 22. And with this, you're going to see music like this all the time, especially on the, the internet. You can download songs. Um, there's different platforms. Ultimate Guitar, for example, where you can go in and you can see the lyrics written with chords. And the chords are written above the lyrics, but there's no indication of measures um, or how long to play a strumming pattern. As an example, when the saints go marching in, we have the lyrics written. On yours, um, this full line will be one line, but there's only so much room on the board. But we have the lyrics that are written here, and then right above the lyrics are the chords. Usually they're approximately in the space they would go where the changes happen, but they're not always. Um, with different word processing uh, types of programs, sometimes it's tough to keep the the line above to keep that chord symbol right above the word where it would come in. So it's an approximation and sometimes they're accurate, sometimes they're not. Um, usually you don't get a strumming pattern with this, but sometimes you do. Sometimes somebody will indicate what you're supposed to do. Uh, they, they try and get it similar to what's happening on a recording. Um, sometimes you don't get anything but the lyrics and the chords. So here in the book, we're looking at number 10, when the saints go marching in, we do have strumming patterns. We have the down, down, up, up, down, for our songs in 4-4, four, four, and we have down, down, up, down for songs in 3-4. And for right now, those are two great options. Um, but we might need to feel if a song is in 4-4, four, four, and if it just doesn't seem like it's working when we're using a strumming pattern in 4-4, four, four, maybe the song's actually in 3-4 time. So, <laughs> if I were looking at this, I've got nothing telling me the starting pitch. <clears throat> I happen to know that that's where that melody is. Usually, 
<clears throat> the pitches that we sing, if we come up to something like this where we're going to hold it, that pitch is almost always in the chord itself. So sometimes you can go through and try and find it, <clears throat> see which one is the melody note. Um, but so we got Owen oh, the Saints. So we would have uh, strumming down, down, up, up, down. So using this strumming pattern, down, down, up, up, down. We're going to have, oh, when the saints go marching in, oh, when the saints go marching in. So we get to the spot with our D7, the next chord change. So we've got these in here in, in the book, uh, probably even better than the handwritten thing. It's easy to decide which one which one is which uh, between the lyrics and the chords. Sometimes with music you'll find on the internet, it can be a little harder to tell. But we should be okay. So we're going to play through these and get a little practice with this. But this is the type of uh, music you're going to find most of the time when you download things on the internet or go searching for how to play a song on the internet. And this is a great shorthand way. Um, I, I've played gigs or with jammed with folks where this is kind of the reminder what are those lyrics and what are those chords it just serves as a memory aid for a lot of us this is like oh well i want to learn that song um let's look at somebody else's outline of it with the lyrics and the chords so we'll play when the saints go marching in and it just happens that we've got a lot of verses here great time to practice playing this one just following along with those lyrics now a challenge that you're going to come across, like when we, we look at that number 10, is that the, the chords are only written above the first verse. When they're not written above the next part, we gotta, we got to use the same chords that we were using before, the same progression. And most of the time they aren't. Occasionally you'll find where somebody actually wrote it out, but usually it's another type of shorthand. Here's the lyrics, but we don't have the chords. Hoping you're getting familiar with the chord uh, progression. Some songs have verses and choruses, and you got to use the lyrics for the appropriate part, and it'll tell you it'll tell you if it's a verse or a chorus. These songs are the same. So here we go with number ten. When the saints go marching in, down, down, up, up, down. <clears throat> oh, when the saints.
right, so we'll take a look now at number 11, which is Amazing Grace. If you'll recall from a little bit ago, it's in three, four times. So we're going to use that strumming pattern down, down, up, down, 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 up, down. Notice at the bottom of this one, as there was on number 10, there's in parentheses repeat first verse. Some of these go back and redo the first verse, and you'll see that there. A lot of times with this type of music, there might be a little in uh, a little instructions here and there. Repeat the chorus, play do two, two times or something like that. So we'll do Amazing Grace. Down, down, up, down, down. And I remember that was the starting pitch from this one. But again, I could try. There's three, you know, there's different chords. Amaze, or was it Amazing Grace? Doesn't quite fit, but the Amazing we can find those pitches sometimes within the chord, sometimes not. When we're playing, when we're being accompanied by piano, a lot of times that melody is actually within the chord, the way they're voicing it. That's not always the case on guitar, as far as it being the highest voice, but a lot of times it's somewhere within the chord. Uh, the, the long notes, at least, that we hold are. So, um, A, so three, two, one. Three, two, um, A. at number 12 while we're here, Red River Valley, which is back in 4-4 four, four times, so we're going to use the down, down, up, up, down. So one, two, from this, and we'll be in one, two, from this valley. The cowboy that has loved you so true. Got to change that up a little bit there. Okay, so we're going to end this lesson by talking about the capo. And the capo's awesome. All, all of those songs I just sing are on the like low end of my register. It'd be nice to sing them a little higher. We can use the capo to change the key. So we're going to talk about that next. Okay, so here we are 
uh, we're going to discuss this capo on page 23. This ca the capos are a great, great tool. This one I have here is just a Kaiser. Um, works kind of like a clothespin. There's different ones. The one in the book uh, is a different type. Um, but they all essentially have the same function, and that is that we can change the key of the guitar. So by clamping it on, I just put it at the second fret. My open strings are now the notes that happen at the second fret. And I can use the same chord shapes that I was using before, but they're in a new key. So we'll talk here for a second about the transposition and what all what all that means. And then we'll play a song. So here on the board, I have a diagram of the neck, just a little piece of it. In on there in the book on page 23, you have from fret zero. So the open strings all the way up to the 12th fret. If you take a look at the 12th fret, it's got the double dots. Most of our guitars have a double dot at the 12th fret. Uh, this particular model doesn't, but most of them do. <clears throat> but it's usually, the f that fret is usually somewhere near where the body is. Uh, sometimes it's right at the body, sometimes it's a little earlier. But the pitches start over there. So remember there's 12 natural notes. So zero, the open strings, and then the, the 12th fret have the same pitches. Fret one and the 13th fret have the same. Fret two and the 14th fret and so on. So you, you have all the notes that would be on the guitar <clears throat> right there in front of you and the knowledge to know what's up higher. Who wouldn't be using a capo any higher? Usually we use the capo down here and just in the first few frets. If you go to the fifth fret and above, it'll actually sound like a ukulele because we'll be we'll be getting higher in the chords and the chord voicings as we're playing may actually sound higher or be higher than where we're singing. So so up here, you only use that if you want that effect. Um, okay, so it's really easy to use, uh, and you don't necessarily need to know the this stuff on the board. Um, the transposition and so on. You can play and use a capo without knowing any of that, but I'm going to explain it anyway. We've got the low string here all the way up to the highest string. So string six, five, four, three, two, and one. Similar to the way tablature works. Um, we don't really learn regular melodic tablature in this book, but if you're interested in that, there is a, a book in the method series that helps you develop the ability to read tablature uh, for melodies and and pieces and so on. So when we play a G chord, for example, our lowest finger is usually sitting here on this third fret um, on the G. So we usually have that note. And when we're playing a C chord, our fingers are usually sitting here right on C. And then D, our, the open string, is our lowest one. D7, same thing. E minor, the low sixth string is the open string. That's where our root is, or our lowest note, bass note of the chord. Okay, so if we put the capo on, for example, at the second fret. Now, when I place the capo, I usually do so as close to the, the metal bar as I can comfortably can. If I get too close, it may make it hard for my fingers to actually play. So you can go back a little ways, and I want to make sure each note doesn't buzz. And it often helps to retune the guitar with the capo on because sometimes sometimes pitches change. I'm not going to do that right now, but if I was in the recording studio or something and I wanted to make sure that things were really in tune, I would double check and fix that. Okay, so now that we got the capo on, we can play any of those chords that we've been playing, G, C, and D7. And this becomes our new fret one, so to speak, fret three. And the open strings are now at the second fret. So our open strings for the guitar, if I use the eraser here, I'm just going to set them right there. Since our, our capo is on the second fret, then those are the pitches. So we've got an F sharp or a G flat is the sixth string, B, E, A, C sharp or D flat, F sharp or G flat. Those are my open pitches. So when I put down the G chord, um, this first this as our new first fret doesn't have any fingers in it just like when we're playing G normally and then we have we have our root or our bass note sitting there at that fifth fret and that 
so our G chord, what used to be a G chord, we're fingering it like a G, but it's now an A. And our C chord, with the root here, is now a D. And the D7 uses this open string, and it's now an E7. Just like so. If we, if our, if our uh, capo was at the fourth fret, so if we move our capo up here to the fourth fret, and we play that G shape, I'm actually playing a B chord. Because the root is three frets higher. We play a C, I'm actually playing an E. And if I play the D7, I'm actually playing an F sharp 7. Or a G flat 7. The reason I said F sharp 7 is because it's the one that's in the key of B. Which is what key we'd be in. And if I get way high, I come up at the 7th fret. And I play these chords. They're really high, and I'm getting a buzz there. But um, if you have a capo, you can put one on here. Capo with the third fret. So we haven't done that one yet. So my G chord is going to be a B flat. My C chord is going to be an E flat. And my D7 chord is going to be an F7. So I'm in a different key. Now, what's the value of this? Well. A lot throughout the book and anywhere you, you get so songs from, uh, we can't always sing naturally with our voices in that key. With a capo, we can change the key while we can still play the original chords. So this is really handy for that. I want to mention these dots are just the dot markings most of us have on our guitar. Some of us will have one at fret 1, some will have it fret three, some won't, but most do. And there are three, five, seven, nine, and then two dots usually at the 12th fret. That's just to help find them along the, the neck and I put them there for that same reason with that diagram. So when using this capo, I can just read the music and play the chord shapes as indicated in the music, but I'm actually playing in a new key. So this doesn't require me to know how to transpose, the actual chords or to play those voicings that I'm playing specifically it allows me just to transpose sing but play everything as if it was in the original key sometimes even though I know how to transpose and some of you may as well I actually want this type of voicing that G sounding chord instead of coming up here and playing other versions or other voicings other types of major chords I may want that G sound anyway, and so I want to maintain the way those chords are working together, but be in a different key. So we'll play Amazing Grace here. So you got down, down, up, down. Three, two, one, three, two. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like Throughout the book, if there's songs that you really want to sing and play, but they're not in a key that's singable for you, then you can use the capo to fix that. Same thing with other songs. And some songs that you may be interested in will actually require a capo, and they'll say capo at fret 2, or capo 2, capo 2nd fret, capo 3, capo 3rd fret. So that, that's a little bit there. Uh, capos are really handy uh, tools to have. And this one is just is just a Kaiser one. Um, all right. So that's it for lesson three. I'll see you in the next one, lesson four. In lesson four, we're going to learn the chords A and E. So we're going to add two new major chords, which will open up how many songs we can play. I'll see you then.
If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. For help with other guitar playing skills, check out more of my method books and the numerous lessons available as part of my online academy here on YouTube. You can find more information about me and my products at kristenbromley.com. Take care.